everybody I wanted to show off this new build of mine um, it's gonna have to wait until I let my cat out because he wants to leave now. come on buddy come on <clears throat> I'm totally leaving that in because I don't care um, but yeah if, if you've been watching my channel lately you've definitely seen this guitar um, it's been in a couple videos so far I did two Green Day covers and then just a quick um, like riff video. I don't remember if it had much context. Um, but basically, I had been wanting to put together another strat for a little while. Um, I didn't think I was going to keep it. I was kind of on the fence on it. If it was just going to be a build for fun and sell or if it was going to be a keep kind of thing. But I did decide to sell it and it is actually already at this point sold. Um, but I was very inspired by Tom's Padre strat. And I wanted to do kind of my own version of that guitar without being, you know, super close to spec. But I knew I wanted a guitar with a stripe. And I knew that I wanted to do like an off-white pickguard with a Seymour Duncan JB. Because that is what the Padre guitar has. And it's pretty much the only Tom guitar that I know of that has that pickup in it. Now, the body was made by third story guitars a guy named Jack Strong very cool guy I like him a lot and um, he's been posting a lot of really great stuff lately um, you might remember a strat that I did a couple years ago that had a ton of crazy colors I think I called it like the Doppler caster based on like you know like the Doppler radar weather reports or whatever but you know a, a lot of people consider it like a jawbreaker kind of look and he painted that one and he painted and relic this one and when I saw he had posted about this, um, I don't know, maybe like a month ago, I think it was like late December or something, I knew I had to have it because I was, I was on the fence on what color to go with and I didn't really want to custom order something and have to wait, you know, upwards of like two months to get it from Warmoth or whoever else. Um, so as soon as I saw this, I hit him up and I'm really glad that I got it. It's, it's a very, very nice color it's 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 confused a lot of people a lot of people think in some pictures that I've taken that it's yellow but it's definitely an orange it's actually a metallic orange and a lot of other people actually think that it's capri orange and it's it's very similar to that shade but it has like a metallic you know fleck to the paint which is really cool close up it's a really nice color and then of course it's got the relic on it which looks very very nicely done um, I've done a couple relics in the past and it's not it's not easy to do and it's very easy to make it look fake you know or to you know make it not look real it's it's a fine line between looking real or you know natural and just kind of obviously fake but I think this was a great job you know I really like the way this one came out um, so yeah, we got that. Um, just a standard American Fender hardtail bridge. My favorite bridge. I put it on pretty much everything. Um, I know Clusen makes their own version that's very similar to this. Um, one thing I like about theirs is they actually offer theirs in a couple different colors. Fender doesn't. Um, so you can get like a black one or a gold one from them, which is nice. Um, I mentioned this already. This is a Seymour Duncan JB pickup, but this is actually a Trembucker. Um, after a few issues in the past, I realized finally that I needed to buy the Trembucker version of this pickup because the wider pull pieces, it matched the wider uh, string spacing of this bridge. Even though it is a hardtail, um, it still is the wider spacing on this fender. Um, now, for the people who don't know what a Trembucker means, it doesn't change the actual size of the pickup or anything like that. It just changes the width of, like the distance of these pole pieces, the little screws on the pickup. It makes them just slightly wider 
so that they line up with the strings directly over them. And you can use a humbucker that, you know, isn't perfectly lined up. People do it all the time. I mean, that's why people angled, or at least did angle their pickups a lot back in the day, because um, on like a Fender guitar, you know, um, before trembuckers were a thing, humbuckers had that tighter spacing. And in order to get it to line up the most consistently over those pole pieces, you had to angle it slightly. And it definitely gives it a different kind of tone overall. I mean, having a pickup, you know, with that tighter spacing, even on a wider sounding bridge, I mean, it's not going to make a humongous difference tonally, but aesthetically it is a bit more pleasing. Um, the pick guard is parchment. It's like an aged parchment. I had, I had uh, Jack actually relic that for me as well. It's not like crazy worn in, but you know, the sheen is off, you know, it definitely feels old, which is nice. I also wired it to a push push pot, which I recently started using. I forget where I started buying them from. It, it was either like Stumac or I don't remember if Warmoth carries them or not, but it's just like the push pull pots that a lot of people have been using, but instead of pulling the knob up, you just push it down and that it that opens it up into the coil split and then you just push it back down. Super easy. All you really have to do is uh, when you're putting together one of these, you just have to make sure there's enough space underneath that knob to push it down enough to engage or disengage the uh, the coil split. So it's very, very nice. Um, I think it's a lot easier than pulling the pickup or the pulling the, the knob up. And um, I don't know, it's just more fun. And what's nice about that is some knobs are a little easier and some knobs are a little harder, you know, in case you like the knob really low to the pick guard, or, um, you know, maybe the pot that you have doesn't really give you a lot of room, you know, and having it like this is just, it's a little bit easier for me. Um, Cause like I said, some knobs, it's hard to get a really good grip on to actually pull it up. So I really like it like this. Um, onto the neck. This was a neck I found on eBay. Um, and it's actually a Fender American neck, which I was really pleased to find. And it's got the rosewood fretboard, maple neck. And I don't remember the exact year. It's, it's a few years old. And um, it, it's in great condition. Really, really nice condition. Frets are great. Um, just regular tuners, not locking or anything, but that's totally fine. And it uh, looks like probably like medium jumbo frets. Looks like it's probably nine and a half inch radius. You know, pretty pretty standard for like most modern vendor stuff. So really nice neck. I was really happy to have found this because um, I don't really like using the newer fender necks. Um, it, I was looking for one with the bigger headstock, you know, the Tom DeLonge style, the 70s style. Um, but I wanted the Rosewood because I don't like Pau Ferro, which is mostly what they're using for like the darker fretboard stuff. But a lot of that looks, you know, kind of light brown or almost reddish. And I really don't like the look of it. And I really don't like the feel of it either. I really, really like Rosewood a lot. It's on most of my guitars and it's, it's just my preference. And this one, you know, really nice dark piece of rosewood you know that that's really really nice um so yeah i mean there's not going to be any more videos of this guitar um i am considering some other things um but i just wanted to make you know a quick documentation of this guitar and just talk about it a little bit and um let you guys know that it turned out pretty awesome you know i i think this is really going to please the new owner and um if you're ever looking to buy something like this from me the best place for you to contact me is through instagram that's where i do most of my posting these days i get um a lot of people on there asking me about builds and most most of what i'm doing these days is just building what i want and then selling it um I get a lot of people asking me to build something specific for them, but that, that's just not really what I'm interested in doing quite right now. Maybe I'll do that in the future. I'm not really sure, but um, it's just a little bit 
easier for me to do this sort of thing because um, I don't have anything like looming over me. You know, like I don't have a customer's expectations of, you know, this is going to be perfect. Like I, I, I can definitely put something together totally fine and not mess anything up. But just knowing that I don't have to meet someone's preconceived expectations, I can just make something how I want to just do it. And if somebody wants it, which most of the time they do, um, it is what it is. So it's it's just a, a lot more pleasing of a uh, situation for me. So um, I am, as of right now, also selling my Koa Jazzmaster. Um, if anybody's interested in that, let me know. Um, that is a beautiful guitar, but that's that's something for another day. Um, but yeah, hit me up if you got any questions or anything, let me know. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this guitar. I'll probably, I'll probably do another build like this sometime. You know, we'll see. And definitely, definitely check out Third Story Guitars. Um, I don't exactly know all of their info, but I'll put I'll put it down below. Um, I know Jack is going to be offering new bodies, and you know he can build your whole guitar too if you really wanted to. And um, he does really fantastic work. I can't recommend him enough. And that's about it. So I'll see you guys later. Definitely check out the covers I did with this guitar already. I did Green Day's Redundant and St. Jimmy. And yeah, let me know what you think. I'll see you guys later.